CSIS 1430 is filmed before a live studio audience. We've already seen some of the units. A lot of them are meant for what's called responsive design or their, their relative units. We've looked at a fixed unit and a responsive or relative unit. So the first one is pixels, right? We know about pixels. Then there's percent, which we've also used a time or two, but we're gonna talk about them a little bit more depth. Then there's a couple new ones here, VH, VW, and I'll talk about what they all mean in a minute. Vmin, Vmax, and then we're gonna look at M and REM, okay? What they all mean, what do they do? We're gonna get to all of that, right? Let's just start with a simple thing here. On my desktop, I've got a little project already kind of set up here, and we'll open up the index file and CSS. And I just have the default or the resets here, margin padding zero and box sizing border box. All right, so let's start off here with a simple div and we'll just name it nothing and we'll just target it directly, okay? So we're gonna give the div a little bit of dimension so we can see it. We'll give it a height of 200 pixels and we'll give it a background color teal. I think that's real in HTML. And let's just start there, see what we got. Okay, it's taking up the entire width, right? We gave it a height of 200. Well, pixels is what we've always used, right? I've given it just straight pixels, but what about if I said something like 50%? 50%, oh, sorry, I wanted to do that on the width, I apologize. So 50% on the width. So if I do 50% on the width, instead of it taking up the entire width of the page, it's gonna take up 50% of its parent, right? 50% of its parent. So right now its parent is just the body. So it's taking up 50% of the body. Well, if we put a width on the body, for example, and we said, I don't know, width 900 pixels, you'll see that this shrinks a little bit because now 900 pixels is how big the body is. So let's put a border so we can see it. That's how big the body is. And notice that teal box is exactly half of that. So 50% is relative to its parent, right? Okay, it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy. If I did 50 pixels, it would be very small, right? That's 50%. Okay, easy enough. Let's look at view height and view, or sorry, viewport height and viewport width. That is what these two guys are right here, okay? So let's take a simple common use case here and we will put some metallic ipsum in there for a moment. and padding of 20. Okay, let's just see how that looks first. There we go, all right. Now, this business where it's sticking out of the box, we're gonna deal with that in a minute when we talk about the overflow, okay? But for now, we'll, we'll leave that there and let's take off the forced height on the div so that doesn't happen. So now it's pushing it down, okay? All right, and the teal is the div, right? Let's actually apply that to the body. So the body has a background color of teal, right? So that's the body. Let's get rid of that border on the div there, or on the background, I should say. So now we just have a paragraph sitting here in our content. Well, sometimes I like to do this. On my HTML, I want the HTML background to be a different color. Background color corn silk. And now look what happens. My body gets all screwed up. Right? I don't know if that's some bug in CSS or if that's just by design or what's going on there. But the body gets screwed up. Now the body is not the full size of the screen. I want it to be the full height, but not necessarily the full width, right? Because if it's the full width, then I don't, what's the point of having the corn silk in the background, okay? So let's style up the body just a little bit more with some padding. We'll do 20 and then we'll center it. All right, so this doesn't look horrible, but I want that teal to go from the top to the bottom of the screen. Well, this property or this unit of measurement called viewport height, which is VH, means I can make the box or the body in this case, a size relative to the height of my viewport, whether it's a screen or my on a mobile device or on a tablet or on a laptop or on a big screen computer, whatever. So if I want to say right here, height is 100, which is 100%, of the viewport height. The viewport height is just however big it is, I want the height of the body to be 100% of that, right? And so that will now 
force it to be the full height. Now there's a margin on the top, that's why it's doing that. So let's just clear that margin out of there. Set that to zero. There's a margin on top and bottom. Now you'll see it takes up exactly, notice there's no scroll bar. Vertical, or uh, yeah, vertical. It takes up the whole height of the page. And no matter what I do, when I start resizing this, it just stays with the page there, right? So let's get my paragraph to not be a specific width by getting rid of that. And now notice here, as I shrink, that teal just stays how it just basically sticks to the size of the window. That makes sense? Okay. You can also do that with width. So let's take the height off and let's make the width 100% of the viewport width, VW. And now it will fill the width no matter what, which is the default behavior of a div, by the way, we know, right? Okay. But you don't have to do 100% of that, right? I can do 50, right? So now it'll just take up 50% of the width of the viewport. So it'll always be 50% of the width of the viewport. And so it'll start resizing, okay? I can do that with the height. I can make it 50 viewport heights. Now my content's overflowing again. We'll deal with that problem in a minute. But now that green box will always be 50% of however tall the viewport is. And the viewport is the browser when you're on a computer but when you're on a mobile device, it's the actual screen itself, okay? And notice it's shrinking there as I move the box because it's staying 50%. Now here's a cool little trick you can do. Let's get rid of that text for just a minute. So it's just an empty div right now. If I refresh it, it's just an empty div. But what I could do is make it the width of the, whatever the width is, 50% of that, 50% of the height, and then for the margin, I can put it like this, 25 viewport heights for the top and bottom and 25 viewport widths for the left and right, which will center the box because 25 top, 25 bottom, that's 50 plus the 50 of the box. It'll just put a rectangle that's the same proportion as your viewing screen, dead centered right in the center of the screen, like so. And no matter what, when I resize this, it's going to stick there and it's going to resize the box to be 50% of the width and 50% of the height. And it'll just stay there in the center until you get ridiculously small there, right? So that's a fun little one you can mess with, okay? You can also use view min and view max. Okay, what this does, let's go, we'll do 100% of the view min, V-M-I-N, viewport min. What this means, look at the viewport width, and the viewport height and take the smallest one and to make it that big. So we refresh this, let's make it bigger here, refresh. It is right now 100%, the width is 100% of the either the viewport width or the viewport height. And because the viewport height is clearly smaller, it's 100% of the height. So in other words, the width of that rectangle is the same as the height of my viewport, right? That makes sense? So I can switch that to be view max and it'll now become the entire width. I, there's a margin on there, this business right here, get rid of that. Now it's the entire width of the, of the width, right? Because I said, use the viewport maximum. And again, the viewport is, there's a width of the viewport and there's a height of the viewport. And this line of code on nine says I want to be 100% the size of whatever's bigger, the width or the height, whatever's bigger, or whatever's smaller. So now I'm going to be 100% the size of whatever's smaller. And again, now the width is exactly the same as the height of my viewport, okay? A lot of use cases for this, a lot of fun things you can do with it. I don't use viewport min and max very much, but I do use the viewport height and viewport width uh, quite a bit, okay? If you want to learn more, feel free to jump onto W3 Schools and check out their stuff there it's pretty cool but now you kind of you know about it right okay let's take a look at a couple more units of measurement we have rem and m and so here is how it works let's make a few divs here so let's just start here we just have outer which has a child with the class of a which has hello a and a class a, a div that's a child of it called b 
and then B has a child, that has, which is called C. So that's what we have. Right now, it's not going to be anything fancy. I'm just going to say hello A, B, and C, right? Easy enough. Well, this M font, font property, if I were to apply on all the divs, the property font size equals 1.25 Ms. This means 125% of the size of your parent, right? That's what that means. 125% of the size of my parent. Well, who's the parent of the outer div? The body. We have not assigned a font size to the body. It just It's going to pick whatever the default is for the browser. We'll just go with that for the moment. But the div called outer is going to be 125% bigger than the body's font size, right? Then div A is going to be 125% bigger than that one. And then div B is going to be 125% bigger than that one. It's going to scale. They're going to grow e each time, right? So if we refresh, we get this, right? A is 125% of the body. So let's put one on the body so we can actually calculate this. We could say font size is 10 pixels, something small. So this one is 125% of that. In fact, let's just double it. Let's just go two Ms. So now, what we don't see is outer. So let's let's put some text for outer as well. We'll go right here to outer and we'll say, hello, outer. And let's even put some in the body directly. Hello, body, okay? Body is 10 pixels. This is double that. 20 pixels, 40, 80, 160, right? That's why it's so huge there. So it just, as you go deeper, you're just looking at your parent and then that one looks at its parent and so forth. It's relative to its parent size, okay? In fact, another way you can do the exact same thing is you can literally just put 200% right there. That's the same thing. That'll do exactly the same thing. Refresh and nothing changes, okay? Yeah, good question. Can we do it the opposite way, which is a hey, bonus points for saying vice versa rather than vice versa, because the proper way to say it is vice versa, and almost everybody says that wrong. So imaginary bonus points for you on that one. Nice. So the way you would do it is you would make the font, rather than 125%, you'd make it 75% or something like that, right? So let's set the font size to, what would we get up to, like 160? Let's just do 120. So the body is huge, and then we'll say each thing below it is 75% of its parent, right? And now, hello body is ginormous, and then it gets a little bit smaller each time down, okay? Yeah, good. Why would you do that? Next week, we're gonna learn about responsive design, which is, okay, if you're on this size of a screen, do this CSS. If you're on this size of a screen, do that CSS, and so forth. And so when that happens, you'll do one little line of code where you'll say, okay, in the event that you're on this size of a browser, change the font size to 10 instead of 20 or something like that. Well, if you do it like this, where you have all the fonts that are relative to their parent and you just change the top font, then everything will scale with it, right? So that's a really good way in your your, it's called a media query, we'll learn about it later, but you basically have some code that says, okay, if the screen's this big, use this CSS. So in that part that says if the screen is this big, which I'm not gonna teach that to you yet, but if the, right, if the screen is X size, then here's the CSS for that, it's different, okay? And so in here we would say, again, I'm not teaching you the actual way to do this, but it'd be body, and then inside the body would be font size 60 or whatever, right? So you would change the font size of the body only in the event that you were a certain screen size. So the reason that's useful is because when we get to that screen size, the body drops down to 60 and now everything else becomes 75% of that, right? That can be very useful. How to do that little trick on line 32, we will learn next week. Okay, now there's M's and then there's REMs. REM stands for root M, and this will make it a percentage of the root size. In other words, whatever the root element of the whole document is, which is HTML, right? So let's set, let's get rid of that for a moment, and we will set the HTML font size to 50 pixels. And if I said I wanted everything to be 75% of that, then everything will be whatever 75% of 50 is, 
that size. So you'll see that they'll all be the same size. Except I must have missed something somewhere. Yep, because I forgot to put rim there. There we go. And now they're all the same size. The body's different because it has its own applied to it and outer has its own applied to it. But Hello A, B, and C, we told them specifically that we want you to be relative to your parent. And actually, outer should have also changed. Oh, and it did. Yeah, outer is the same size as these. Yep. Body's the only one that should be bigger. Okay. Because we did because body is just whatever its default size is. We didn't tell it to be 75% of anything. Okay. So this can also come in handy, right? So that's really it on units. There you can do all kinds of things. There's points, PT, there's picas, PC, there's millimeters, centimeters, inches. You can do all these things. And if you want to go to this page right here, you can look at all the units right here, right? And then you can look at all the relative units down here. Okay? Lots of different things you can do in here. But go look these up. The reason I'm showing you this, when you get in the real world and you're writing web code, there's no way you're going to know it all. There's no way. So you got to learn where this stuff is. And, and so the goal with this font stuff here or this size stuff is to, when you're out in the real world one day, you're writing some code and you're like, hey, I remember that thing that Jeff told me like 10 years ago about font sizes. What was that called again? I'm going to go look it up. I'm trying to put all this stuff in your brain, right? That's the, the goal here, okay? All right, so questions about units.